Hello and welcome to another episode of Tree Service Marketing Profits Podcast. I'm your host, Wesley Smith with TreeServiceDigital.com. And if you're on YouTube, like and subscribe to our channel. We've got plenty more expert interviews coming up just like this one that you're about to hear and uh, more exciting content on marketing and different things like that coming on down the line. If you're on the podcast, on the audio, we're on all the major uh, pod or, uh, podcast players, Spotify, Apple, Amazon, you name it, we're on those. So just like, subscribe to your favorite podcast player if you just want to hear the audio. But today we've got Evan Deco on with Jolly Green Tree and Shrub Care out of Long Island, New York, and he's going to share his business story. And we certainly appreciate it, Evan. Thanks for joining the day. Thanks for having me. No problem, man. Thank you. Uh, well, let's let's hear about maybe how you got started in the tree service business, or I guess it was it's a family business. So your father yeah. he gets started. And when when was that all taking place? I'm, I'm second generation in the business. My father started back in 1975. We say 76, just because he'd forgotten many years ago. He's like. But that's a whole another story. 70 uh, something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, you know, and I've been in it my whole life. I, you know, went to college, have a horticulture degree, and then I've just continued to pursue it as far as licensing, accreditations. You know, I went as far as to get my master arborist. Uh, you know, I hold six pesticide licenses, six different categories. I mean, you know, just if you're going to do it, do it right. My father said, look, you want the business? Take it one step further than me. Keep going. So, there you go. so he started it in 1975. Yep. And um, kind of started growing it, I guess, organically, like anybody else in the yeah. business. Yeah, like anybody else. You know, most people. You know, most people start their own business. They're tired of their boss because their boss is an idiot, and they can do everything else right. And you know, it's. I think my father's exclusively done this since 1981. You know, but. Yeah. You start off just as like tree service or was it landscaping? Uh, no, it started out, you know, and back in the 70s, everyone was a landscaper. You know, you were cutting the grass, planting the bushes, planting the flowers, cut, cutting the trees, spraying the trees. And it just, over time, we've just narrowed it further and further down, looking at, you know, looking at profits, looking at what we're actually interested in doing. Got it. So it started off kind of as like traditional tree services, maybe some yeah. landscaping stuff. And yeah. Kind of grew it from there. Did you kind of start working with your dad a little bit early on, or was that something? Oh yeah, I was. When I started working with my father, I think I was five. His pictures of me when I was five. You know, I running around, you know, dragging around the rake, and you know, and then I think every summer from maybe ten or eleven, I was on the truck. You know, I was pushing the little mower. Uh, you know, you know, you know, clean up the sticks after the guys do the tree work. Bring the rope to them. Bring this. Bring that. You, know? you learned it from the ground up, yeah, from an yeah. early age, and kind of saw what it took to kind of run a successful crew and get yeah. the job done right and all that stuff. Yeah, awesome. Um, so he gets started, starts growing the business. I've got a similar story with my dad, like we were talking before we started. Yeah. And plumbing business for thirty five years, and growing up, you know, it was weekend, and he had a, a job to do for somebody. He'd come wake me up, and hey, it's time to go to work today. It's be a Saturday, so I, I had a lot of experience in the truck. I think riding around in the truck with him and his, his helpers and stuff, I would sometimes sit on a bucket in the middle of one of those little white vans, you know, right? Oh, there, yeah. Because there was not a third seat there in some of them. So yeah. you just sit on a bucket right there, right at the job and knock it out. And then we come back. And yeah. uh, I always enjoyed that because it gave me a chance to hang out with my dad a little bit more often and stuff like that. So I can relate, man. I, I, I did that from a young age and he, he ran that business for about 35 years. So family business has this whole set of dynamics, but it sounds like you guys really kind of grown it to the next level oh, um, yeah. in a business since 75. I mean, heck that's 47, 48 years, I guess. Something like that. Something like that. Yeah. 40. Yeah. About 40, 48 years now. Okay. Are you guys still kind of in the same area that you were when you first? Uh, yeah. You know, we're Long Island, you know, my, you were a few towns over from where my father started, but you know, we, uh, you know, we've gone from running out of his garage to we're in a 3000 square foot, building with a 300 square foot office and you know all because we're playing healthcare i got to keep all my trucks inside mm -hmm. you know spring and fall and we're here so let me ask you this so he started off as a regular tree service business and kind of started you know growing kind of like growing yeah. the probably during the 80s and things like that 90s yeah. did the the plant healthcare division kind of start uh with jolly green tree and shrub uh, i did in you know the early 2000s Okay. You know, we we you know we had a little two hundred gallon sprayer and you know I'm looking you know I'd go out oh okay we need this done that done and yeah I, 
I was always interested in the puzzle. Mm -hmm. You know, okay, cool. The tree's the tree's not well. Why isn't the tree well? What's going on with it? You know, figure out is that a lack of nutrients, a lack of you know bugs, or what have you. So I always enjoyed that. And you know, I looked at the fact that I could outproduce any of our crews by myself. You know, the crews of three, four, five guys. I could produ outproduce them financially and profit wise by myself with one truck. And wow. I said, why am why am I wasting the time and all this other stuff with all this iron? You know, chainsaws that break. You know, chippers that break. Lawn mowers that break. Everything that was breaking. When you know it's one pump, one engine, hose reel. You know, maybe two or three hose reels. Why am I bothering with the other stuff? So did it kind of morph into more plant health care than tree service? I guess ultimately, oh, yeah. A while, right? Yeah. You know, at this point, I don't even own a chipper. You know, it's just we're plant health care. The only trimming we do is over the winter to keep those, you know, because we always have that core group of guys you want to keep busy. Sure. You know, because if I lay them off, they're not selling back up in March. You know, guys who, all right, you know, I got to keep these guys busy all year long. And a lot of it, you know, the need, you know, what, what do they say? Need is the mother of invention. Mm -hmm. You know, I looked at it and I've always had a problem saying, hey, I need these crepe. My client needs these crepe myrtles burned. My client needs their roses done right. They need the hydrangeas done right. You know, all those beautiful plants people are really concerned about. And I said, you know what? I can, one, offer the service over the winter. Two, I can keep my guys busy and I can keep, you know, so many businesses, they're going to run, you know, March through December and then just watch the, then just watch your bank account drop mm -hmm. all, year, all winter long. I said, you know what? If I can do enough to keep the rent paid and keep payroll covered, I'm going to go into the, every spring with a nice amount of money. Yeah. And it, you know, it's make, you know, not going into the negative. It's good yeah. stuff. Good insights for people there to take away from right there is uh, it's recurring and repeat treatable business, right? Yeah. Higher margins. I'm sure, I'm sure when you really kind of break down the numbers and so probably less risk um, and different things like that. It's just a great add on service to your existing tree service business or oh, yeah. from scratch to implant healthcare. I think there's people now doing just that. Oh so, yeah. It's, you know, everything back in the day, trucks were cheaper. You know, the, you know, the equipment was cheaper. The labor was cheaper. You could afford to have a yard with a truck you only might take out two or three times a month. Now, you know, I just picked up a new freight liner. Actually, I just picked up two new trucks this year. You know, just the cabin chassis on a freight liner was $83,000. That's a $1,700 a month payment. I picked up a, you know, an Isuzu for another small truck. You know, you again, you're over a thousand dollars on a payment, two fifty a week. You know, if you're working five days, you're at fifty dollars a day. So you gotta you gotta remember to offset all those costs. Yeah, and uh, take me through a little bit about and, and the viewers as well. If you guys have any questions, pop them in YouTube. We'll be happy to answer those after the fact and uh, jump in there. But take me through kind of your customer. Uh, base is it is it more commercial like property owners or business owners building owners management companies uh, it, you know it, it it goes all throughout you know we do a lot of catering halls office buildings a lot of high-end residential you know the clients the residential clients looking in one of two ways you know the normal houses you know 60 by 100 100 by 100 plot you know here on the island you know it's the normal house we're there to solve a problem Hey, you know what? I have I have Arbor Valley Leaf Miner. So I'm going to be there for two or three years, deal with it, get the bushes looking good. Then they're going to drop it. Okay. You know, because they don't want, they don't view it as maintenance. Mm -hmm. The larger estates we do, you know, five, six, 10 acres, what have you. We're, we're like cutting the lawn. It's something that's got to be done every, you know, every month just to keep everything looking nice. You know, the clients look at you a little different. But, you know, we have a mix of all, you know, some clients we've had for two or three years, some clients we've on the, been on the properties doing different things for 35 years. Yeah. 
So wow. yeah, get the job done right and do do good. People are really yeah. concerned, like you said, with their plants, uh, the yeah. health, trees, and all of that stuff, right? They don't. Oh yeah. Die. You know, I I remember in the, a couple of years back. This is going back probably fifteen years. I had a client who called me up. They wanted to find out what was wrong with their bushes, and they said, you know, Evan, that you know, it was a small yard, little backyard, just the pool. They had all the all their arborvitaes were stricken with arborvitae leaf mite. And she's like, Evan, what I got to do? I got to replace these. It's going to cost me $60,000 to replace them at the same size. I said, look, I said, can you give me two years? Is two years? I said, yeah. I said, give me two years. I'll have these full again. She's like, okay, if you're right, if, if you think so. Every time I see this woman still, she talks, this, Evan, this is so great. You've saved me all this money. You know, it's mm -hmm. there's your word of mouth referral right there, uh, which is that's how we live. You yeah. know, it's referral from existing clients. It's referral from landscapers, you know, because people that don't specialize in the plant healthcare side. They need an expert to come in there and take a look at these things. Yeah. 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 So, OK, so you've got a good mix of clients, your residential, commercial businesses, I'm sure just. You know, anybody that's concerned with plant and tree health care, yeah. you can cover, um, which is awesome. Let's go into kind of your the marketing side of the business and like how you guys grew it once you got into the plant health care. Um, I know you just said that the um, doing great work and getting people mm -hmm. the outcome they want for their plants and yeah. trees, of course, is going to generate a happy customer, which goes a, a, a country mile for referrals. Yeah. Um, and then on top of that, what else do you think would be? Some of the things that you're doing, you got a website, you're doing, well, that, you, know, you know, we, we have websites, you know, we have our website, we have social media, um, a lot of how I have built my business. And I think it was about 85% of our referrals last year were from other professionals. Mm -hmm. You know, the landscaper who doesn't, you know, they don't quite, under, you know, they stop at the bed lines. So, Hey, Evan, I planted this bush. Can you tell me what's going on with it? Absolutely. Give me a call. I'll run down that. You know, the the irrigation guy, the mason, anybody who doesn't do plant health care, you know, making myself the name. Oh, Evan's always available. Evan, you know, Evan can find the answer for me. And doing that has really gone very far, you know, because you go in as a referral. You're you're going to have a much higher chance of closing that client. Absolutely. A trusted yeah. resource. Right. Yeah. And you were already referred guys, everybody listening, take note of that. That's a very important point is becoming like a certified arborist and becoming, you don't necessarily have to have all the credentials that Evan has, which he's got all of them, but just being a certified arborist or somebody who people can bounce questions off of to answer their questions about their trees, about their plants, about their shrubs and all of that is going to make you that person that sticks out in the community, right? Because not everybody, like you said, Evan, has got those credentials or that knowledge. And a lot of people don't even care to learn all of that stuff. So yeah. then they're going to have to rely on somebody or they want to provide a good referral for their homeowner, for the business owner that's looking for something like that. So you become that person amongst dozens and dozens of other landscaping companies and irrigation companies and tree companies that don't specialize in that. So it's almost like it goes viral because you're one of the only ones around that specialize in that type of service, right? It's just, you know, you know, there's a, a friend of mine who started a thing called the Contractors Roundtable. It's a it's a group on Facebook and it's just constant referrals back and forth. Oh, I need somebody who does this. I need somebody who does that. And, you know, I'm also very lucky and then I have a, a lot of friends in the media. I've been on, you know, between the different news stations, I think I've been on around 35 times. Wow. Yeah. Different pieces, you know. I was on two pieces recently about spotted lanternfly, mm -hmm. you know, the mosquitoes and gypsy moths and, you know, anything, you know, it's having that knowledge base and know, knowing when to say, oh, you know what, I don't really know about that. But, you know, with my clients, I was telling them, look, I might not know the answer, but I know the guy who, who does know it. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a very active extension service here on the island and we have an ent entomologist, patho plant pathologist, weed specialist, who I can go to say, hey, I'm having this problem. What can I do? And that's why, that's why they exist. You know, make them your friends. Hey, what's going on? 
you know, they have the answers for you. That's awesome. And just, you know, the sheer duration that you guys have been in business also helps too. So stay, oh, out, right? stay in business, treat yeah. everybody the right way, the way you want to be treated, go the extra mile and yeah. always have happy referrals if you do all of that. Oh stuff. yeah. You know, and being willing to say, I'm not sure, but I'll get back to you, you know, is true, is huge because, you know, especially successful people, they can pick out a bullshitter real quick. Oh yeah. When you're, when you're just, blown smoke up their ass they're going to know it real quick they're going to catch wind of it and they're going to figure yeah. something else out maybe somebody yeah. else right but that's awesome man those are all great valuable points because when you when you kind of differentiate yourself in this industry and in this business and i think a lot of the world is going green right they want everybody wants to save trees and so these things Absolutely. are going to be more and more top of mind and yeah. front line than they were in the past anyway oh so, yeah you know, being that specialist like you is going to be a huge advantage, I would say, in the future. That helps. You know, it's it's knowing your business, going what you going what you have a passion for. You know, a boat without a rudder is just going to drift endlessly. You know, it's okay. Look, these are the things I'm interested in. Go after them, or you know, finding people who work for you. Hey, you're way into that. Go with it. Being willing to get behind somebody who works for you, and say, hey, you know, giving them the resources. Yeah. You know what? You want to do more chick control. You want to do more mosquito control? Fantastic. Run with it. Mm -hmm. it's one of those guys who can fill the seats is hard. You know, I have a great plan healthcare guy. I have a good turf guy. But, you know, outside of that, I don't, you know, they're not available. And I think, you know, also with the marketing side of things, I think you guys picking that name, Jolly Green Tree and Shrub Care, it's a happy, uh, optimistic sounding business, right? I think, you, you know, it's yourself. funny. Yeah. is the whole story behind it. It's, like I said, my father started in the 70s mm -hmm. and everyone was something green, something green landscaping. And, you know, and my grandfather said to my father, Bobby, you're a jolly guy. Call it Jolly Green. That's remember the Jolly Green Giant? Giant? Remember those, uh, those candies? Yeah. Okay, yeah. Yeah, well, it's funny because I'm, I'm, I'm just under six and a half feet tall. So, uh, you know, it, yeah. it, it it sticks. It's funny. You know, it's... A memorable name for sure. Yeah. Memorable name, you know, being so tall, I've had this beard, you know, long time. It's being a memorable person, yeah. you know, working with what you have. Fitting the bill perfectly. Well, that's awesome, man. Was it, so yeah. any other marketing? I mean, so we got the online presence. It sounds like cover. You've been in the media, which has a huge positioning standpoint. Yeah. You being the expert, that's huge. Yeah. Um, any other stuff that you guys like? Do, signs or billboards? You know, what I do? Uh, you know, signage. Every truck is wrapped completely, yeah. you know, um, you know, it's it's an appearance business. Yes. If you don't appear to be professional. You don't appear to be doing the job the right way, not running around in, in trucks with, you know, blowing smoke, you know, garbage stuff hanging off the truck, you know, tape wrapped around every 50 feet in the hose. You know, you show up. And the other thing I do, too, is. You know, marketing to my client, my client's direct neighbors. Mm -hmm. Just a simple postcard we send out occasionally. Hey, we're in the area. Wave when you say hello. And we get good results from it. Great idea. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's because who's a better, who's the better client, you know, is the guy next door. That's the best client to get is the guy next door because the windshield time is reduced. Yeah. Are you doing it right after, right after the job? Like maybe from that. I know I have, we have, we maintain a list. Every time we get a new client in, we populate five or six names around them. And then we send that out. You know, we'll send out a few thousand at a click. Great hey, idea. You know, and just regularly do it. You know, it's the thing of, you know, yeah, you know, different people say, you know, four interactions, six interactions, eight interactions with your brand before they'll call. This is truck in April. They get a mailer in, in March and April. There's three. They see you in May. Another two, maybe one or two mailings then. And you, you get that eight, 10 interactions. You know, they see the truck going down the road. 100%. That's where it's at, man. It's the impressions. How many yeah. impressions are people seeing you? And so that's one of the biggest missed opportunities that I see when we're talking to either our clients or just any business owner in the, yeah. and, you know, the service-based home-based businesses like yeah. um, home service type businesses is, is wrapping your vehicles. And I think a lot of it is maybe they're not sure exactly what to put on the vehicle 
or they don't want to pay for the upfront expense of wrapping the vehicle. I'm not sure which one it is, yeah. but you know how many times, like every day you're, let's just say one truck does, or one crew, even if the traditional tree service business, one crew does yeah. three to four jobs a day, if they're trimming yeah. jobs, whatever. How many thousands of people are seeing that vehicle? It's parked in the neighborhood for hours on end, which hundreds yeah. of people come and go in the neighborhood. You're, you're coming and going from the job. So the main thoroughfares, people see you over and over there. You're helping to solidify that you're the tree company in that local market too. So it just goes so far if people see your trucks wrapped over and yeah. over and over and over again, right? Yeah. You um, know, and the other thing that a lot of guys, you know, there's only a few guys that do it. And I wrote an article a couple of years back about it. You know, that cheap marketing you can do. If you're into these properties, some of the properties where I am are six, eight acres. You know, your trucks are all deep into that house. You get a big sandwich board. They stand, you know, four feet tall. It's an A-frame. You put it out there. Hey, work from so-and-so. And, you know, list a hand, list four services. A friend of mine does it. He gets a ton of work. Yeah. You know? Well, I think the thought is, is like the neighbor trusts this company to do their tree service work or their tree yeah. health, health care. Yeah. I do it too, right? They're already doing a good job for them. So I guess we'll give them a call. Yeah. That's great. And and that's kind of what, you know, with our program with marketing and, you know, a lot of that's what we preach as well. Like you really do need to wrap your vehicles because that's going to be one of the bigger impressions opportunity that you have in the local area. We do cool. you know, direct mail. It's a great idea. People, if you're watching this video and you're getting some value, comment below, let me know what you're thinking. But that's a great share for mailing people that you just done work for a new client, mailing five, 10 of their neighbors. That's a great idea. We do a lot of zip code um neighborhood type mailings for a lot of our clients same type thing you're getting the awareness yeah. out like you said it's about eight to ten impressions right and yeah. then eventually when they're ready they know who they're going to call but mm -hmm. you've got to stay in front of them enough times to where they're going to remember oh yeah for tree service for plant health care tree health care i'm going to call this company right here right and they're not going to forget because yeah. you're in front of them so much and then a good retargeting campaign on social media where when people visit your website or your social media pages they continue to stay into your kind of influence on online is sure. targeting ads. Those are very good for that too. Yeah. So great points there, man. That's and just doing it, just doing it often. And and for the duration, for the long haul, it yeah. just, it just, you can't build a business in one day, but if you keep doing this stuff over and over again, yeah. that doesn't seem like too long down the road, you're going to be doing pretty well. I tell you one of the better things too, and I see it all the time is these pens. You know, you know I have pens with my name on them and the phone number and the website. Mm -hmm. I've seen them in clients' hands years after I, years after we started doing service mm -hmm. for them. You know, handing out, you know, when you bring an estimate to a guy, don't bring it on a piece of loose leaf. You know, have something. Mm -hmm. Now we have just a simple, simple folder. Yeah. With my, you know, some information in there, a trifold. You know, the estimate, the pen. You look more professional. That's marketing. Yeah. That's marketing 101. It's just every little thing you do is higher end. Yeah. And, and another thing too, I, I forgot to say this earlier. When you were mentioning, you know, make your trucks look professional, like yeah. you did right there, when you leave behinds, when you give estimates, you leave a nice folder. Yeah. In. The more professional your image is, the higher end clientele you will attract. Is that true? Oh, yeah. I mean, that's yeah. who you're going to attract because those people yeah. are looking for professional organizations to take care of them because they've got the money to do it. Mm -hmm. they, want to be ghosted with a contractor not showing up and they want to yeah. deal with somebody who is proud of their business and they can find them afterwards if something goes wrong Absolutely. So that's kind of one of the points i think that you know a lot of people overlook is that they want to deal with a, a contractor who's respectable and professional in the local mm -hmm. area yeah yeah it's, there's a lot of stuff you could do for free you know like there's all mom's groups there's gardening groups online follow them be the one who answers the questions. You know, I, I, you know, I might check them once a day, once every other day, and go through answer four or five questions for people. Hey, what's going on with this? Oh, this is what you're saying, and you know, you quick paragraph, you know, quick two sentences. Oh, yeah, oh, that guy, oh, that guy told me what to do. And I'll have clients piping up right under me. Oh, yeah, Evan's the guy. Evan fixed this. Evan did that. Evan did cost me zero a little bit of time that's it yeah you know you're sitting there waiting for a client for 20 minutes go on one of the boards you know you sit in your truck takes nothing respond on your smartphone 
Great point. So everybody listening there, you can join local Facebook groups, like local business groups, like you were talking about earlier, yeah. local gardening groups. Um, I mean, there's all kinds of groups on Facebook, right? And you can yeah. go there and just provide value, just answer questions, and people will think of you to do tree service work or plant health care, tree health care. Whatever anything. it is. Yeah, because you're you know, giving them free advice. A friend of mine, you know, he's a landscaper. He has a sign, and he puts it on any any client that he started doing work for. Watches this property changes with and his company name and the phone number on the website. And he puts it on there. And now people are going to keep looking. They're going to keep getting their interest. You're getting five, six, seven, eight impressions on these people in a two week period from walking their dog. Yeah. And they go, oh, this yard is so nice. You know, and this guy will literally just bounce from neighbor to neighbor to neighbor doing projects. And you get into these neighborhoods, well, you know, you did so, so-and-so's house. You did, you know, Betsy's house. You do mine, but mine's got to look better. Okay, well, you know, it's a little more money. A little you competitive uh, approach. Yeah, they want to be in competition. Yeah. yeah. That's awesome. These are all great tips, man. Little things yeah. you, you haven't maybe even thought of before. Well, I want to be respectful of your time, Evan. I appreciate you joining us today. Yeah, no problem. Like, like is there any other things that you would uh, well, tell us about Jolly Green Tree and Shrub uh, Healthcare? Are you guys kind of looking to continue to expand? Are you, oh, yeah. you, you know, know just in Long Island or what? Uh, you know, I don't know if we'll ever leave Long Island. You know, it's uh, only because, you know, we got a lot of bridges that surround us. True. Yeah. You know, so it, it it's a certain impediment. We, you know, I do, I do a certain amount in Manhattan, Queens, Brooklyn, you know, which, which are interesting. You know, we start working at 10 o'clock at night, 11 o'clock at night, and we'll work till four or five in the morning. We drive home and everyone's driving into work. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, uh, it's interesting being in Manhattan at two o'clock in the morning. I'll bet. Yeah. Yeah. You know, but characters out there probably. It's, uh, there's characters everywhere, but you know, it's, it's fun. You know, it, and I'm very lucky in that, you know, I live in a very highly populated, very wealthy area. Mm -hmm. You know, I have multiple clients who own national brands, you know, like, oh, I've heard of that name. You know, I've, I've heard of that company and, you know, I'm very lucky in that I, you know, just had a chance. I live here as opposed to Peoria, Indiana, you know, wherever I just, you know, this is where we settle. You know, and it's a good area to work. You know, there's a, there's a tremendous amount of competition, you know, but like I'm, I'm the president of Long, Long Island Arbor Association. There you go. Yeah. You know, I'm in there. Me and my friends hand work back and forth all, all the time because it allows us to keep, we could set, you know, geographic borders. Okay. Look, I don't go past there unless it's a really major job. I don't go past here unless it's a major job. You know, if I'm going to the East, you know what? Call my friend Jeff. Jeff's a great guy. He'll take care of you. Jeff does the same thing with me. And we just continue to be, you know, just keep getting that route density. It's yeah. great. You yeah. make more money staring at the windshield. That's true. Yeah, no, just getting out networking and being a part of that Arborist Association. That's another big thing, yeah. right? That's your yeah. local area. You're perceived as the expert again in there. So yeah. all these positioning tactics and things, just getting out there and, you know, being a part of the public and networking and talking to homeowners and business yeah. and like that just the more of that you do, the faster things will kind of take off, I think, instead of maybe hiding behind the truck or not being a friendly, yeah. sociable person. So those are all great tips there. Yeah. And it goes even further to position you as the expert since you're the president yeah. of the association, right? So, yeah. you know, it's, uh, you know, I've, you know, for, you know, almost, you know, just through being there and being willing to do, being willing to give. You know, I also teach, I teach, you know, the pesticide preparatory course, the 30 hour course for guys to get their licenses. Most of these guys who are taking it are going to do lawns. They're not going to do trees. You know, I'll teach 200, 250 guys a year on average. And, and maybe one fifth, you know, but maybe eight or 10 of them do trees. The rest of them don't. And I see these guys out all the time. Oh, Evan, can you call this guy? Can you call that guy? I'm having a problem. You know, being willing to give of yourself a little bit to, again, like you were saying, establish yourself as the expert. It pays off long-term. 
Yeah, because now you're getting referral from that person, but then they'll also tell, hey, uh, so so give Evan a call. Hey, let me give you his number. He'll, he'll know exactly what to do with this one. Yeah. And then you, so then that person knows four other people. They'll give your number. Yeah. And you know, over time, it just keeps going and going and going. Oh yeah, I you know I get referrals like, oh so and so told me to call you. I'm like, oh great, oh great guy. No idea who the heck they are. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they're my client database here from ten years ago. Yeah, yeah so you just you never know where it's going to come from. But if you, no, you don't, and you, and you share information out there, then it really really helps. And that's one of the reasons I've got this podcast is because people in the tree service business want to hear from other successful tree service business owners and. Yeah, it just it just makes a difference and it provides a lot of value. Yeah, so, um, I appreciate your time today, man. Those are great nuggets of wisdom. So anybody watching that, you know, take note of that. Those are great things you can do. And some things just take a little bit of time um, and a little more energy, but you still get the same result. You'll get referrals, you get business out of it. Other things you can spend money on, like mm -hmm. marketing or direct mail or Google, you know, Google whatever search marketing, yeah. whatever, and that'll bring in business too. It just depends on kind of your local area. And how fast you want to get there, type thing. Um, did you want to maybe share any other parting nuggets before you before you take off? Like maybe a tree service business owner just getting started. Like what do they need to look uh, for? You know, it, know what your fixed costs are. Know how much you can actually do the job for. When are you losing money? You know, because you know a lot of guys go out there. They're out there. They're just spinning their wheels. Oh no, no, but I'm making money. Are you? You know, what does it cost you? To show up every day and turn, you know, and put your feet on the ground. Every day when I put my feet on the ground, I know how much debt I'm under. I know once we had to do X amount of work, then I start seeing my money. You know, what does a rain day actually cost you? That's that's a big deal. Yeah, knowing your numbers is huge because yeah, yeah otherwise you don't really know how much you need to be targeting to, yeah. to do per day or per week in revenue. This isn't a hobby, mm -hmm. you know. It, if I wanted to do something for fun, I'd go out on my boat and go fishing. You know, I don't need to come and spray your trees for fun. I'm yeah. done. Right. Got to be, got to be a price there. Got to be a profitable price. Can't just right. be cost. Yeah. So if you know the numbers, then you'll know intelligently how to price everything. Right. right. You know, and don't be willing. Uh, don't be afraid to tell people that your time is worth money. You know, I do a fair amount of consulting. You know, get, you know, because of my credentials, it's, it's easier for me to say, hey, you know, you're going to pay me 225 an hour to come to your site and give and have a conversation. But it's worth something, you know, no, I ask people all the time, you know, if they, they balk at it, I said, when's the last time you went to work for free? What do you mean? I said, you're asking me to come to work and give you my knowledge. Mm -hmm. You're going to pay for that, you yeah. know? There's a differential between consulting and an estimate. You know, if there's for future work, I'm going to give you some information, establish myself as the expert, you know, but it gets to a point where, hey, look, you're just here for you. You're not here for both of us. So look, you can either start paying me for my time. It's no problem. I, you know, I offer that service. Or you know what? I think, you, you know, you've gotten the information you need to make a decision. If you need me, call me. Yeah, I think there's an old saying. It's, um, you know, you're not just paying for the service to be done in a quick amount of time by a knowledgeable professional. Yeah. You're paying for the 20 years of experience that it took that person to gain to be able to come out and give you the diagnosis yeah. and to get it yeah. in 30 minutes to an hour, right? So yeah. that's what you're actually paying for. So again, I think it goes back to the clientele, right? If you're attracting the right, right clientele, you'll probably get less of that friction um on those type jobs and then you would otherwise but you're, you're right i mean it's sometimes people want things you, you have to know what your costs are because you yeah. know having these trucks around and these vehicles around they're going to cost money per day so yeah you gotta know how to price your services yeah you know it's uh actually one thing is that i learned a long time ago and it's helped me more than ever, anything else is knowing that not everybody is my client i have my clients you're going to have your clients they'd be different clients different classes of clients different things they're looking for you know, certain people want an owner operator where they know that that guy is going to be on their property for every job. Certain people, you know what? I want the bigger company. I want what have you, you know, and that's what they're looking for. But the one's not going to buy from the other. And once you figure that out, no, okay, you know what? Not everybody is my client. You get the go. That's so true. It's not a scarcity, not a scarcity mindset, but there's plenty of business for everybody to go around. Yeah. That's that's a great point too. Um, a lot of people, 
talk about the competition. It's, you know, it's, it's big out there. And I think it is in every industry, honestly, but there's competition in every industry, every niche uh, under the sun, I believe. Yeah. It's just how you market your business and the longevity of it. And then treat people the right way, doing what's right when nobody's looking, all those different sayings is what's going to get you where you want to go, you know, in the long run. Um, so, well, this has been great, man. Thanks so much for your time, man. I'll be respectful of your time, man. I appreciate it. No problem, bro. Um, and uh, anybody else watching, if you got any questions, comment below on YouTube. If you're on the YouTube channel, like and subscribe to our channel. I want to thank you again, Evan, with uh, Jolly Green Tree and Shrub Care in Long Island. Great story today, great, great shares, great valuable insights. And uh, we'll see you guys on the next video.